Hey guys, I'm Dylan John, and let's once again cut out the fluff and jump straight into the tutorial. This first one I call the hold frame reverb effect. Let's say you want your song to end here, but you don't really want to just cut it out and have it be silent. You don't want to fade it out because it still sounds like it's playing as it's fading out. And you could try the method of cutting the last bit of the song, lining up the beats, and having that last bit of the song play out where you want it to end. But often, the song may end abruptly or not end how you would like it to. Hey guys, I'm so if that's the case, try this. Go to the beat of the song that you would like to be the end. Usually this is the beat where the cut is made in your video. And go over a frame or two and press the shortcut Shift H. This creates a hold frame. Extend the hold out a bit more and just trim off the end by pressing Option and right bracket. You'll see that our audio ends abruptly here and then is silent. Here's what you do for the effect though. Head to your effects browser, search for Cathedral 2, and double click to apply. You'll notice that we now have audio in this previously silent section. The issue is that we have also affected the rest of our song. So press Ctrl A on your music to bring up the audio animation editor. Hit this drop down menu to expand it and set two keyframes about where the beat in the song was by pressing Option K and then Option K for the next keyframe. Then just completely cut out the cathedral effect from the rest of the song by lowering this bit to the bottom. This way, the cathedral effect only affects the song from here on. And if we play this out, you'll hear we have this nice echo at the beat that gradually fades our song out. Hey guys, I'm Dylan John. Almost like we created the song and ended it right here. And if you want, you adjust the effect by lowering or raising this bar here and adjusting the distance between your two keyframes. Hey guys, I'm Dylan John. This next tip is called EQ sweeping, and it is a solid way to clean up your voice audio so it sounds better. I went over this in my Creating Better Voice Audio tutorial, which goes over quite a few other techniques. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put it in the description and in the comments. But what you'll need to do is add Channel EQ, which can be found in your effects browser, and double click to apply it to your voice audio. Open it up by heading to your inspector window and clicking this icon. Press Analyzer so you can see the waveform of your voice when we press play. Next, you'll take one of these four frequency bells up here, and despite being different colors, it doesn't matter which one. You'll narrow up the frequency range by pushing on the sides, and how narrow you make it is gonna depend on how much you wanna cut out the bad frequencies. To make this next step easier, hit Command L to change the playback to loop. You'll see by hitting Command L, the playback icon changes. This will repeat sections of video and audio for us. And press the shortcut Shift and question mark to have Final Cut play a few seconds before and a few seconds after your playhead. Then you'll sweep back and forth until you find frequencies that just sound off. Frequencies that are loud and annoying. Q sweeping. And it is a solid way to clean up your voice audio so it's EQ sweeping. And it is a solid way to clean up your voice audio so it's You hear how this frequency stands out and just sounds bad? We'll remove this from our track by cutting it out. So lower this to about negative six to negative 10 decibels or so. The narrower this colored zone is, the more you can lower that frequency range. If you try and lower a range with a wide bandwidth, you're just gonna be cutting out a lot of your audio and it'll be pretty noticeable and distracting. To clean up your voice audio so it's EQ sweeping and it is a solid way Let's sweep again to check for more frequencies. Sweeping and it is a solid way to clean up your voice audio so Here's another one, so we'll do the same. Lower about six to 10 decibels or so and do this as many times as you need to. While this process mainly helps you to find the harsh and aggressive frequencies in your voice audio and remove them, it also can be used to boost specific frequencies in your voice that sound good. The next trick is another one you could use as an audio transition for your music to signify a shot change. Just for reference, here's what the music sounds like before we try this audio trick. So start by adding the AU low pass effect to your music. 
Open your inspector window and hit the drop down menu to see the parameters. You'll go to a position a few seconds before you cut or transition to that new shot. Swing off the cutout frequency to the far right and hit the keyframe button. By doing this, you're essentially setting the effect to zero, so no effect. Then head to where the cut is and lower the slider to around 400 hertz. Then go a few seconds later and lower even more. And towards the end, fully slide the slider to the left. So here's what it sounds like. So this is another way to manipulate your music so it ends where you want it to, but in a cooler way than just a lame volume fade out. And if you're curious what this effect is doing, you're essentially gradually cutting out big chunks of frequencies in your music, starting from the high frequencies until the very low frequencies are all that's left. If you thought these three audio tricks were useful, you'll definitely enjoy this video about other free effects in Phonica Pro that can help you to spice up your videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.